On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, you will learn another Elvis concert location from 1955, right here where you're looking at, and hear a story from the class president of the high school and how he helped Elvis get into the gymnasium. All you pretty girls there at the CVS Pharmacy in Tupelo, be sure to uh, take care of Mr. Clayton for me, and uh, you're about to learn his cool Elvis story. And make sure to watch this episode all the way to the end. You're going to learn some great stories. Stay tuned. I'm Jerry Clayton. Uh, we're standing on the uh, site of the former Belden High School. Belden High School and Belden Gymnasium where Elvis Presley performed. Uh, and I don't know uh, a lot about the history, but I know a good bit, but uh, to my knowledge, it was his first time to ever perform back here, close to his hometown, where he was born. And he, uh, it was a great performance. I was a senior in high school, and I was president of the senior class, and we had Elvis down as a fundraiser for our class. A fundraiser, okay. A fundraiser. And it turned out well. The gymnasium was full, and it was a it was a very enjoyable event. And so tell me, so tell me, you're the president of the senior class. You're you're there sitting inside the gymnasium. Which where was the gym at? The gym was the right gym was right about here, past this fence. Uh, uh, this fence probably is sitting on the entrance close to the entrance to the gymnasium. Right. Right, and the high school, or the school building, was over here. It ran, they ran parallel to each other. And I never will forget uh, that afternoon, uh, Bill Black, who was a member of his band, uh, came down to hook up their equipment. Uh -huh. And I was summoned by the principal to accompany him, and I stayed over after school that afternoon to help him get their equipment, which was very wasn't a whole a whole lot of equipment. Elvis only had two people with him, Bill and Scotty, and I assisted him, did whatever he told me to do, uh, and I. I, I I've laughed about this several times while he was rigging up his equipment. He got his pocket knife out and he was trimming a wire. He had broken the wire and he was trimming it to find him a new spot to hook up. And he cut his finger. He cut his finger. And he threw the knife down and grabbed his finger and oh, he, I, I, I don't think he was in that much pain. I think he was afraid that he might not be able to play that bass fiddle that night like he should. But he, anyway, it was very enjoyable and he did a great job. And uh, I really enjoyed meeting him and, and, and helping out whatever little I helped out. I think I was more of just company to him and showing him where everything was. And, uh, but he was a very interesting person. and. I couldn't help at that time but notice the admiration and the respect that he and Scotty Moore each had for Elvis Presley. They, they seemed to really enjoy performing with him. And it, uh, it, it was very impressive. Well, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, I've read on, up on Bill Black, and they said he was a character in himself. Well, he was. He was. And do you have any memories of Bill Black that night? I remember one time they they were getting a tremendous uh, applause, and Bill had his bass fiddle here or here, whichever side he, you know, 
and he jumped up on top of it. On his fiddle? Uh, on his bass fiddle. Yeah. And kept playing it. And he got a he got a big applause just for that, which he was entitled to, I thought. And they seemed to enjoy performing uh, as much as the fans enjoyed watching them perform. But I, I never shall forget uh, when they arrived, Bill and Scotty had already gotten here. And, and I had shown them the boys' dressing room. And the only entrance to the dressing room was inside the gymnasium. And, and, and the gym was already full of people. Right. Well, uh, Elvis did not want to walk through the crowd right. before his performance. So they asked me, so what am I going to do? I said, well, the only thing I know to do is let him in the window. So I held the window open and helped him in the window. And, and he came in, and they were several of my buddies in senior class in the dressing room with us. And everybody was talking and carrying on. And Elvis came in. I never shall forget how he was dressed. He had on a purple purple pinkish leisure suits. That's back when leisure suits were very much in style. Yes, sir. And I, along with everybody else, admired the way he was dressed. And the first thing Elvis started doing when he got in the dressing room was start asking about old friends of his in Tupelo that he had gone to school with, classmates, when he'd been in elementary school and junior high school. You know, he moved away from Tupelo at an early age. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he remembered their names. Uh, how about old Freck Sutherland? How about old Billy Crabb? How about old Bobby Crabb? And, well, and he wouldn't even give us time to answer him. He was asking about another one. And I guess he asked about 15 people at least. You know, and, he wanted to know about his old friends. Oh, he wanted to know about his old friends, yes. And... Uh, People had heard him on his, rec his recordings and, and so forth, but they'd, he had not been on television at that time, but they didn't know what to expect uh, out, of, out of him as a live performance. And he was at the end of the gymnasium. Which would be over here. Over here. He was... He, uh, he came out of the dressing room. They they were set up close to the basketball goal. Okay. Not under it, but between it and the sideline. Sideline. And he walked out, and he was just you know all to pieces, just swaying one way and then the other. And uh, picked up his guitar, looked around, and he here they go. And the, the fans just went wild. I mean, they went wild. And, and uh, at that time in my life, of course, I was just about 17 years old, uh, just a kid. And I, I, along with a lot of other people, had never seen a live entertainment out of a, of a performer. And I thought it was great. I mean, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. And then when the show was over, they let people come in to get autographs. Okay. And the dressing room was flooded mostly with girls. The girls loved it. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them had to tell Elvis how to spell their name. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> because some of them he couldn't understand what they were saying. I couldn't either. But it was a, it was a great performance and a very, very great experience. I remember asking him myself uh, what kind of cars he was driving and I think he had three maybe three automobiles at that time he, I know he had a 1956 Ford Victoria which was a sharp automobile at, at that time and he had just purchased his first Cadillac I believe it was the pink Cadillac that he purchased I think that was his first one okay. I, I could be wrong about yeah. the color yeah but he had, he had bought his first Cadillac. And everyone talked about that performance 
for years around here. You know, Elvis Presley, oh, he's great. And he made a lot of fans that night, and, and, and to my knowledge, kept those fans all during his career. And they're still fans. So yeah. Still fans. I know, personally, I saw him do, I think it was four live performances. The next time I saw him was when I was an adult, and I saw him in Las Vegas. You saw him in Vegas? I saw him in Vegas. What was that like? Oh, it was great. It was about like here. Yeah. They just went wild. So which was the best show, the Vegas or here at Belden High School? Well. Early Elvis. I'm fascinated with early Elvis. I liked the one here best. Because it was real Elvis. It was, it was a real thing. Everybody, you know. And of course, the one in, 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 in Vegas was good. And okay. then I saw him again. The last time I saw him was in Memphis. You know, he had been, he had been number one for a long time before he ever performed in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And I saw him at the... Mid-South? Yeah. So you were at that show? Yes. You? And I know my wife and I laughed about it a lot because <clears throat> we were sitting there in the auditorium and there was a row of girls, young girls, in front of us, and and I thought I'd pull a little joke. Mm -hmm. I turned and asked my wife, I said, did they ever say he was coming by to see us after the show? And it, it got their attention. And my wife says, I think so. She was going along with me. And all those girls jumped up and turned around and started asking me questions and that thing, and you know. And yeah, was, you became the coolest guy ever. Yeah, I, yeah, I was, I was, because I knew him personally. Yeah. And uh, uh, I always admired Elvis. Uh, personally, I don't think it changed the person that he was a lot, the fan, the, the fan base that he had and the famous name and number one performer in the United States, and uh, he was still the same Elvis the last time I saw him yeah. perform, which was years later. And uh, he, he was just a great person, a very interesting person to be around. Oh, I bet. Yeah, and... and yeah, and not many people, Mr. Clayton, can say that they actually helped Elvis sneak into a gymnasium window of their high school. Yeah. But you can say that. Yes, I can. So that makes you definitely a cool person in my opinion. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but uh, <clears throat> it was quite an experience, and, and uh, it didn't make me famous, though. But, uh, <laughs> all they cared about was Elvis. They didn't care. They cared about <laughs> Elvis, right? So, yeah. so we're, okay, so if I'm standing right here, and like you told me, this would be the, the front of the gymnasium where we are standing. Yeah, about, about right. So, so that the window, the window would have been where? On the left-hand side, on the very back. So would it, it would have been on this side or behind no, the building? No, it would have been on this side. Okay, so guys, you can kind of visualize this because like Mr. Clayton said, the, the locker room would have been right back there where I'm pointing at. Yes. At the bottom of the gym or... Yes. Is it like a basement of the gym, I guess? No, well, yes. The first, it was about four feet below the playing floor. Yeah, and then you came up some stairs to you the came up court. about three or four steps. And yeah. And I can other, visualize that because, you know, I grew up in basketball gyms, so I was yeah. in some older gyms, yeah. and, I, you know, the locker rooms would be down in the basement area, and you'd go up a few flight of right, stairs. Right, right. So I picture that's how it was, this gymnasium. Yeah. How big was the gym? It seated about... Maybe 2,000 people. 2,000. And that night it was packed with Elvis. Oh, it was packed. There were people standing. And they had taken, they had pulled chairs out on the playing court. Yeah. Because he was at the end of it and the, the stands, the regular stands were full and they had, had chairs out. All on the court. On the court. You had a front row seat though as oh, a class yes, president. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> did yeah. you dance that night, Mr. Clayton? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were telling those pretty girls there at CVS Pharmacy that you were going to hit some dance moves on this today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think it's a little too hot. It is pretty hot out here. For me to, 
yeah. get into that. So, okay, so, okay, I'm gonna pick your brain just a little bit more. I know okay. it's hot out here, but any anything that just stands out from that show that you didn't tell me about, like just a song or something Elvis did or something Scotty and Bill did other than Bill jumping on his ba uh, bass? Anything well, else? Uh, I think Bill Black probably cracked a couple of funny remarks. Scotty, uh, this is what I remember about him. Mm -hmm. Scotty Moore was very reserved and very quiet. Right. But he was a great musician. And uh, he, uh, and you could just tell though that they enjoyed performing with Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. and, and they enjoyed the stardom that he got out of his performances because they knew in their heart and their mind that they were making a contribution to it. And they felt great about that because they wanted him to be successful. And the more successful he was, the more successful they were. Exactly. But uh, they, it, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't just for their own ego, mm -hmm. you know, each one of them wanted all three of them to do good, and they did. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they did. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, watching them. And one other incident happened uh, after Elvis's death. I was the Lee County Chancery Court clerk at the time. And I believe it was in '77 when he passed away. And. I don't recall the exact year that I, I was serving on the Elvis Presley Commission. Mm. And we had uh, uh, Colonel Tom Parker down. And they were only about, it was a very private deal. I think, I think we had about 100 people there. Okay. And I, I had the privilege and the honor of presenting him Colonel Parker with uh, Key to the City. Key Tupelo. to the City of Tupelo. Right. And uh, he was a very pleasant person to be around. Very, very, very nice. And I, I, I certainly enjoyed meeting him and, 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 and talking with him. And uh, after, while I was serving on the commission with Janelle McComb, whom a lot of people know in this area, you can mention Janelle's name. Uh, she did all of Elvis's personal writing. Okay. Personal letters and things like that for him. And she, uh, golly, she donated, I don't remember the exact amount, but it's over $100,000 of uh, material that she had received from Elvis pictures and things, you know, yeah. like that. And, and I, I was given some of the things, you know, like a, I, I remember when the little picture came out of just the home where he was born, you know. Yeah. And I, ha I got one of the early editions of that and one of his gold records and, yeah. and several, several things that I cherish. Oh, I bet. Definitely. And, uh, uh, very much. And, and that came from Janelle's own collection to yes, from yes, Elvis. Yeah, from from Elvis to her to you. Yes, yes. Uh, of course, I wasn't recognized as helping make Elvis or anything like yeah. that. <laughs> but but uh, Janelle saw that I received some of those things out of her appreciation for me helping out. What little bit I did help out, which I, it was a small, small part. And, uh, a small part, but a big part for us to have today. So we can continue yeah. to learning about Elvis's legacy. And like for me and the spa guy and everyone that does these videos, and that's why it's important for me to meet you yeah. because you can, you can show me like, uh, visual, I can visually see this basketball gym standing here. I can visually see that show now because of the stories that you provide for us. Yeah. So, you know, I really appreciate well, you. Well, you're a big basketball fan. I understand your father's a very successful coach. And, 
My dad and my granddad both yes, successful yes. basketball coaches, so I have and, that basketball and, blood just like you do because – Yeah, I coached for a while. And he has a state championship as well as a basketball coach. Me and uh, the assistant coach I had, Dennis Waite, that followed me okay. uh, together. That's unbelievable. And, uh, so tell them, you coached at Tupelo High School? Yes. Tupelo High School's head basketball coach from 19 – well, I started, uh, I did my student teaching, practice teaching out of college. I did it at Lawhorn. At where, Lawhorn, where Elvis? Right. Went to elementary. That's right. And I did it there, and then I was offered a job in the Tupelo public school system from my practice teaching over there uh -huh. with uh, Coach Tom Holloway. Okay. A great guy. Good friend of mine. <clears throat> and... Uh, my first job in Tupelo was at Milam Junior High School. Milam Junior High, where Elvis would go to junior high school at. In eighth grade, I believe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, then shortly after that, he moved to Memphis. Yeah. So you're con you're, even your career is kind of connected to Elvis. I mean, with just Well, the... I guess you could say that. Yeah. yeah. I, fo I, I followed in some of the footsteps that he had made. You did. But I've always been a fan of his, and I'm still a big fan of his. And, and uh, uh, I think he was a great guy. So, okay, now this was Belden High School. Right. You went to Belden High School. Tell them, Belden now is a part of Tupelo. Yes, Belden, Belden, uh, we're, we're about, I guess about three miles from where the Tupelo city limits were at that time. Okay. And since then, uh, Belden High School was consolidated. Let's see, I can remember when Lee County had about 13 high schools. Um, okay, so they all, now they're all together. Yeah, they're consolidated. Yeah. And, and uh, Belden was consolidated with the Morville School District, which is on the other side of Tupelo. Mm. And part of it was, and part of it was, was Siles Hillow, which is another yeah. small town, great town. And uh, then Tupelo took in Belden, uh -huh. city limits, and it, it actually extends for, toward Pontotoc uh, um, at least a mile, I guess, from the, the downtown Belden. So did this, so did the gymnasium and the school set vacant for a while? Yes. How long did it set vacant? I don't Because I believe I read, I think I told you, 1998 is when they demolished the, the gym. Yeah, well, it had been vacant, though, a lot longer than wow. that. Wow. Yeah. Well, and, and then the, the school was used by uh, juvenile court for... Uh, for a while, I, I won't go into all that because it's very confusing. And I, yeah, we, but it, the, the the school was used after it was a school. Yes. For a, for a period of time. Yes. So tell me, you know, I'm curious about this. How in the world did y'all get Elvis to come here? I don't know. We had a choice between Elvis and Johnny Cash. Okay. Uh, and that's something. Yeah. Because and they I'm were a, both up and coming in '55. Right, I'm a big fan of Johnny Cash. I am too. I love the Man in Black. And uh, we took a vote. Elvis won. And Elvis won. Uh, wow. And we we got him, and we weren't sorry of it. And of course, uh, we love Johnny Cash too. Yeah. You know, I, I think he's he has his own type of music, his own personality, and 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 everything, and and. Uh, He's a star in his own right. Right. Legend in his right. own right. Icon. Yeah. So yeah, I guess y'all just wrote a letter to whoever, I guess. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure if the colonel was representing Elvis at this point or if it was um, uh, Bob Neal. It wasn't the colonel. No, it was. The, so it would have been, it would have been Bob. Um, I believe Bob Neal was his name. He was the guy that was Elvis's manager right before the colonel, colonel took over. So that's probably who you guys wrote to. Y'all probably had an address in Memphis. It was in Memphis. Somebody yes. knew. Somebody was a big fan of him at this point. Yeah. I don't know. I don't recall how that part of it started. I, 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 I just remember that we did have a choice 
with either one, Elvis or Johnny Cash, and we chose Elvis. Wow, wow. And, uh, and you let him sneak in a window right back here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. didn't, did you see his car that day? I didn't see his car. Because you, you were inside the locker room. I, I was inside the locker room. Elvis was on the outside of the locker Elvis was a little bit late. Oh, he was late. Oh, just a few minutes. What, was it what time of show? Do you think eight o'clock, seven o'clock? Probably seven o'clock. Okay, but Elvis was late to his show. Well, maybe seven fifteen, fifteen minutes or something like so that. So even back then, when Elvis was starting out, he already knew the show didn't start until he got there. That's right. He told that to Dean Nicopolis later on in the seventies. Dean, go tell them the show don't start until I get there. That's right. And when he left the building, it was over. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. But while he was still in the building, that's why they, you see these things, Elvis has left the building. Yes, sir. So you can all go home. Uh huh. But if they thought he was still around, they were going to hang around and try to see him. Yeah. And most of the girls got to the locker room, as you told me. Yes. Yes. Now, when he got, when he snuck in the window, you let him in, did you tell me that he, he ripped his pants? No. Okay. That was something else I had read. Uh, yeah, no. Okay, so that he, didn't he was happen. very careful about that. He, and you said a purple suit, a purple jacket. It was a purple leisure suit. You, do leisure. you do you remember the leisure suit? I do, I do. I, know, I don't know if I remember, but I do know the... Well, you didn't wear a necktie with him. You did? Okay, you didn't wear a necktie. All no, right. No, he had a... He had a... I don't know what you call it. A white shirt. It was... A lot of stuff on the outside, but... He, uh, I never forget when he walked out that night, and uh, yeah, the crowd was pretty noisy until he hit the floor. When he hit that top step, they got just as quiet. They didn't know what to expect. They'd never, they'd never seen him. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they just had heard his his record. They, right, right. And but boy, did they get a pleasant surprise because he really put on a show. He did put on a show right here. He really gave them their money's worth. Man, I, I can I can hear him sing right now, right here. I, I can yeah. still hear that music playing. Yeah. Uh, did, okay, um, I was going to ask you, because I think you had mentioned that to me, and then we'll end it here. Did he make you hold his mirror? Yeah. You didn't mention that a while ago. T tell about that. So, well, uh, he was wanting to comb his hair, <laughs> and anybody got a mirror? And somebody handed me a little three by five mirror. That's all I had. A little three by five, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I held it up like this. Well, one of my friends first held it, and my friend was moving as much as Elvis was. And I said, here, let me have that thing. And I got the mirror, and I held it for him, and he he doing this and combing his hair. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, I'm finished. And so I took the mirror back. And we... Uh, when he got ready to go out on the stage, though, we all left the dressing room. Mm -hmm. Everyone left. Bill and Scotty left. They went out and got Sit. in their position. Mm -hmm. And they were just standing. They were looking at the dressing room. And when he topped that step, that you could you could hear a pin drop. Wow. There for just a few seconds. Yeah. But when he strummed down on that guitar. <clears throat> He brought them to their feet. I mean, they, they just phew, brought them to the feet. And it was some show. It was some show. It's a great memory of mine. Great memory of mine. Mr. Clayton, I really appreciate you sharing the story with us and bringing me here so I could see it with my own eyes. Well, the location. Yeah. I wish the gym was still here. I do too. Man. I, I do too. Uh, uh, you know, I started the school at Belden. But the school building one here had, been, had either been burned down or blown away by a tornado. Oh. This used to be what we call Tornado Alley. Right where we're standing at. And I, I started uh, to school in Tupelo at the Tupelo Military Institute. Belden School Board had rented those buildings, and, and Belden went to school down there. Okay. And then so they were building this building? While they were replacing this building. Wow. And then later on, when I was about... Oh, 13, 14 years old. The first time I think it had burned, I'm not sure. Mm. And the second time the tornado got it, and I had to go to school for, uh, one, I know one semester up at Sherman, which is just up the road. Okay. It's, it, it's in uh, 
Pontotoc County, corner of Pontotoc County. Sherman is right in the corner of three counties of our Pontotoc Union and Lee. And we had uh, certain grades went to school up there and certain other grades went to school somewhere else. But my class went up there. Wow. We're the building faculty member teaching our class. Okay. But we were just on their campus. So uh, my school years got interrupted a couple of times because tornadoes, tornadoes. <laughs> all kind of things so this was yeah. tornado alley i've heard that yeah. before here in Tupelo. yeah i can recall when they'd give out a tornado warning i w it was my job to go around and get certain kids that their mama told me now you get little johnny or little jimmy or you sally or so forth and you get them home for me so you'd round them up i, I round them up yeah. <laughs> well, Ms. Clayton, I really appreciate you telling us this story. It's, it's going to well, be a great video. Some people might not find that very interesting, but if you, if you had the privilege of living that experience like I did, it, 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 it's very interesting to me. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, not anything to brag about, but it's a very good memory. Okay. Very good memory. I cherish it very much. And I, I do, let me say this, uh, Ty, I do appreciate you asking me to share this memory with you. And, and uh, it's, it's uh, very much appreciated. Well, you know, I was lucky to find your name in an article that you had given in like the night in the 90s. Yeah. And when I, I found your name, I just researched you and I, I had to call you up. Well, I've been contacted several times. I know I was contacted once from someone out of England who was writing a book. That's amazing, yeah. And uh, he had some things that, uh, uh, it wasn't the way it happened. Right, and we're all about true stories. That's why I sure. do these videos. I want the truth. Yeah, he, told, he, he even told me that he had interviewed someone. They told him Elvis performed up here twice. And that's not correct. That's not correct, he performed one time. One time in his senior class show. And Mr. Clayton was the president of the class. 1956. 56. It's when I, when I uh, graduated and then I attended Edelwamba Junior College. And uh, Elvis, we used to have a, a fair that would come to, in September. Mm -hmm. And it was a Tupelo. Fairgrounds. Yeah, Tupelo, Alabama, Mid-South Fair. Okay. And all the schools in Lee County and Tupelo would turn out on this particular day to get to go to the fair. Okay. And they would even bus the students down there. You could either stay at home or go to the fair. I chose to go to the fair. And I and I, even they excused people from class at IJC in college or junior college to come to the fairground. Fairgrounds and Elvis performed down there. And. Uh, Another place that <clears throat> Elvis uh, liked to visit, another person was the family of, uh, of uh, Joe Savory. Mm. Mr. Ike Savory was the president of the Fairground Association or whatever it was. And Colonel Parker would deal with him on Elvis coming, you know, and they became friends. And Joe Savory and Elvis became very good friends because Elvis stayed in their home. Oh, okay. Sometimes overnight. All right. Do you yeah. remember where their home was? I remember where it used to be. It's not we there. We might have to ride over there. Yeah. I'm all about yeah. location. Yeah. But yeah, so he's the guy that the colonel would have called to make the deal for Elvis to come back in September of 56 to play the Tupelo Fairground. Yes. He, he, he brought him to Tupelo. Right. Mr. Ike Saver, he had an insurance agency. Okay. And Elvis... Uh, put on quite a performance there. I mean, it was... Boring. So were you at that show? Yes. So tell me about that show because oh, I'm doing a story was, on that. It was in the afternoon. Okay. And there was, to my knowledge, to my memory, I don't remember being in any place to sit. We were all standing. Yeah, in front of the stage. In front of the stage. Mm -hmm. And Elvis put on a heck of a show. Wow. He really did. And, uh, crowd went crazy, didn't they? They went crazy. Girls, the girls just tried to get on the stage. Now, one girl, I think, jumped on the stage. 
Yeah. Do you remember yeah, that? I remember that. I remember one girl jumping on the stage, and I think one girl got injured trying to get on the stage or something. Uh, hurt her arm or cut her arm some way or another trying to get on the stage. But that didn't matter to them. Yeah. You know, they could overlook a little pain just to get close to him. And, uh, but he was, uh, he was quite a entertainer. Was it hot that day? Pretty warm. About like today, probably. It wasn't quite as hot as it is here today. Yeah. But I know I'm squinting a lot because sun, the sun, uh, the sun, the sun I am too. Well, well Miss Clayton, I appreciate <clears> this, man. So right here, guys, right here was Belden High School's gymnasium. And inside there, Elvis, Scotty, and Bill performed an incredible show, as Mr. Clayton just uh, described to us. And he, of course, led Elvis in that back window over here where I'm pointing at. So Elvis could make an appearance, not from the front of the gym, but he wanted to come up the back stairs to the back of the gym closest to where the stage was set up. Mm -hmm. And like he said, the crowd got quiet. And when they first laid eyes on Elvis, they loved him ever since, right? That's <laughs> right. Well, a lot of people might, you know, remember things differently uh -huh. uh, than I do, but I was part of him performing here at Belden, and I remember that part of it very vividly. I've even had someone tell me, oh, that's not right. He had four or five people in his band. He didn't. No. He had Bill and Scotty. Yeah, you were right. It was Scotty and Bill. That's all. And definitely at that point, you know, later on, he, they had DJ uh, Fontana. Yes. But not at the point that he played here. No, no. Well, man, yeah, you're just, and you're lucky, though, that uh, your principal called you in that afternoon to come over here to the gym and hang out with Bill. That's right. Not many people probably have that story. That's right. And he cut his finger. Cut his finger with his own pocket knife. With his own pocket knife. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what he said. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and tell me. I'll, bl <laughs> I'll blank it out. we got to have it. I don't, I don't recall, but it wouldn't do to put on the He had some uh, co colorful world words, yeah. right? Yes, he did. So we can imagine what Bill Black said when he cut his finger. <laughs> Just think about it, guys. All right. Well, hey, thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Elvis was. So there's a chance, I guess, that Elvis would have driven up this way. Because the, front, yeah, of, the uh, front of the school circled here. And then this was a parking area. Bill or Scotty, one, came into the dressing room and said, Elvis is here. How are we going to get him in? He don't want to come in through the crowd. Mm. I said, well, the only other way is to come in the window. That's the only entrance. So they went out and told But it was a type of window that you push out, you know. You don't have to raise it. You push it out. So he had to duck under it and go over another one. Okay. And so I held it for him and where he wouldn't bump his head and so forth. Yeah. And he made it through okay. He made it through except he thought he messed up his hair. And, and you had to make sure he'd hold yeah, well, that mirror for him. Yeah. So how, how, how far off the ground would the, the window have been? Was it just probably? Probably about like that door window. So just visualize that, guys. That window probably was off the ground about that much. So yeah, so that's convenient. He could, he could get yeah. in that window. Yeah. Well, yeah. You're... I don't recall if there's anyone outside with him. I think they just showed him yeah. Uh, they may have stood there while he got in. I don't know. I bet what because happened Because no one is, was interested once he got in there. No one was interested in what was out there. Right. So I bet what happened was Scotty or Bill went out and told him, hey, uh, we're going to get you through the window. Yeah. And maybe they were at, out there with him. Could have been. And then they came back in and through see, the gym. And see, they could have they gone out. The, the gymnasium had the front door here, and then it had an exit door right in the center under the goal. Mm, you know, okay. they could have gone out it and come around. Gotcha. And yeah, but he did not want anyone to get a glimpse of him. <laughs> and I don't blame him. Yeah, know, he, this is a show. It, it would have spoiled his show. Right. But yeah, but the school building. So here's the gym. Here's the gym, guys. More visual. Elvis Park somewhere out here on the side. Mr. Clayton's school, Belden High School, ran like where this building is. This is not yeah. the building, but it ran that. Way. This building is sitting on part of the land the school occupied. Yeah, where your classrooms were was right here where this building was. And then you can visualize a school just had a circle drive right there. And then where I'm standing at today was the parking area for the gym. And I, I, one other thing I'd like to add, 
this building down here. Uh huh. Turn around and look at it. Okay. That's sitting on well the the front of it was approximately where the principal's home was. The principal lived there. He lived there. And I can recall when we were in high school, us boys been out here playing baseball and we'd pitch a ball up and hit it and try to knock his windows out. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you guys tried to do back yeah, in the day. No one ever accomplished it. Yeah. So the gym was back there, guys. So if you are in this area and want to see it, check this place out. Here's a fried chicken place. But look who's on the wall right here. Right across the street from Belden High School's location, you can eat like a king. And there's a picture of our boy Elvis right here across the street from where he played. Here. That, and that post office was here also. And the post office was here back in that time. <clears throat> so some things change and some don't. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble. Subscribe. It's free. You stay updated with every new video that I upload, which is once every Tuesday, and special ones here and there. Please like this video if you like it. Share it. And until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.